Yes, the attention of the world's automakers may have shifted to crossover SUVs in the last decade or so. But Nissan says there's still something new to experience with small passenger cars, and the Almera is proof of that. Hey guys, Vince here from Auto Industria, and what I have for you is the new and improved Nissan Almera. This generation of Almera was launched uh, just a couple of years ago, and now we have the updated model. The reason is, well, the Almera launch here in the Philippines took a while compared to the ones in Thailand before. So already, we're getting an updated model with some new features we'll show you in a bit. But the big thing with the Almera, of course, is the new design. It has this new grille with actually quite a bit more chrome, especially on the new V-Motion style right there. It does have these sharp headlights with the arrow signature type of DRL over there. And then you have the fog lamps down there, the LEDs, of course. But really, I don't know. I'm kind of partial to the pre-facelift look of this Nissan Almera because it seems to be a bit cleaner in, by my eye. But still, let me know in the comments below what you think. This being an update and essentially a facelift, it's still pretty much the same body as before. But you can see some of the changes Nissan made. The wheel design, of course, that's uh, new for this model, I think. The tires on these, these are still Bridgestone Ecopia, so really good for efficiency. Uh, they didn't really update any of the other mechanicals here because these are still disc brakes in front and drum brakes in the back and a torsion beam as well. It's not a multi-link, it's not fully independent in that sense. Also, yes, the brakes, drum brakes, I kind of wish they updated it to disc brakes in the back, just like some of the higher grade Vios variants. And this being the VL, it is a top of the line variant. Here you can also see the, co the color contrast with the new color as well as the black roof and the black side mirrors. What's unusual here though is that I would have wanted Nissan to have kind of made this part a little neater because this being an update, it's not, it's not exactly seamless the way that looks with this. It would have been nicer if had they continued the line there somewhere, somehow. I'm not too sure how they would have executed that, but it really looks, it reminds me of the, what, what the Toyota did with the Fortuner LTD with the way it comes up right there. But still, it's a pretty good looking vehicle. Uh, I do like the way that they have the grip type door handles with the button there, similar to a lot of other Nissan models. Of course, the rear door does look pretty nice and it does close with a nice satisfying thud. And of course, the back, well, minor changes here and there. It's really more of the taillights, some of the other accents. Nothing really major. Uh, the accents here, of course, they removed as much of the chrome as they can. It does have the new Nissan logo. All that stuff, really. Not much to talk about here in terms of design, so let's get under the shade so we can show you a bit more. Now that we're under some shade and out of the La Union sunlight, we can take a look at the cargo space of the Nissan Almera. It's actually quite respectable. Uh, right now, with the rear seats up, the space you have is about 40 inches from here to around there, and then 39 inches wide between the wheel wells, and also 22 inches uh, up here. Uh, depending on what you want to carry. Of course, the opening here is, uh, you, have, you have to contend with that. But the great thing here is that this is actually a 60-40 split, meaning you can fold down this side, that's the 40%. I'm not gonna fold down the other, the other side yet, but what you end up with is a space that is 62 inches from here up to there. The maximum width here between uh, the actual uh, panels is around uh, 54 inches, so it's plenty of space inside. But what I really like, come on, bring it in, is when you look under the floorboard, you've got a space saver spare tire. I mean, I would always contend that a space saver spare is better than no spare or a tire repair kit. You've got a jack here, but crucially, you've also got some space here if you wanna you know, put some more tools and stuff that you wanna keep away from prying eyes. So when it comes to space, really, the Almera has got it made. Now let's check out the interior. Quite a few customers actually weren't too happy when Nissan switched over to this generation of Almera. And that's because there are a few key changes with the vehicle. For one, you lost the rear AC vents right here. This one still does not have it, but no matter. I mean, the AC of the Almera is plenty powerful. But also the legroom. The previous one was very, very spacious in the back, like a, kind of like a little limo kind of thing. 
but this one even with the rear seat set for a taller driver the seat uh, the space here is actually plenty not as much as the one before but still plenty the floor isn't uh, fully flat there is a little transmission or at least an exhaust tunnel there but that's all well and good you do get one usb port here in the back uh, also like i showed you earlier this can actually fold down if you need to access something in the trunk and that's all well and good if you don't need to you can actually enjoy one of the best features uh, on the almera which is this rear armrest because they positioned it like nice and high so it really does feel like an actual armrest not like you know like when it's like like down there in some other models this one is perfectly fine with two cup holders anyways anything else no nothing else well let's go up to the front and see what that offers at first glance, it doesn't look like Nissan changed too much with the interior of the Almera. Mind you, we are in the Almera VL. This is the top of the line model. The steering wheel still looks the same. It's the D-cut type, meaning it's got a flat bottom. It's got a nice uh, grip to it, nice rim. Baseball style stitching here, controls on either side. The instrument cluster still looks the same. This still looks the same, the infotainment unit. It's still a single zone climate control unit. Uh, the gear selector, the drive selector still looks the same. Cup holders still look the same. Seats still look the same. So really, it doesn't look like they change too much until you start looking at some of the details. For example, if you notice, I'm kind of leaning on an armrest. This wasn't present in the VL before. This is a new feature. Comes with a nice little compartment in there for all your stuff. And of course, that also moves uh, the USB ports over to the back and right there yeah there's the usb port here in the back of course this one still does not get the ac vents in the in the for the rear passengers which is kind of a bummer because that was one of the biggest selling points of the previous generation almera um, also when you look around you've now got a wireless charger right here so my phone is enjoying the wireless charging pad uh, over in there they've reoriented some of the things here uh, with the usb input and the 12 volt socket uh, also the mirror seems to be new i'll have to recheck my older videos but this seems to be a new rear view mirror it's a rimless design uh, also if you look here there's a little uh, sensor package right up here the camera sensors that's for the in nissan intelligent mobility features in this vehicle it comes with things like uh, the Ford emergency braking and all the, that other stuff. And of course, the 360 camera will show you in a bit. But one feature here is this button up here. It's the SOS button. It's part of the Nissan Connected uh, Services package. Basically, if uh, you get into an accident, you know, knock on, no, there's, there's no more wood in these modern cars. Uh, but it, it basically, if you get into an accident or if you have some car trouble, you can open this switch and then press the red button and uh, basically it will connect you to the Nissan call center where they, where they can give you roadside assistance. So uh, I pressed that yesterday. We'll see if we can roll in a clip of it right now. So the impression of the interior, the dashboard still looks nice. It's still plasticky in a few places. Again, I, I would think that the Honda City still has the, the better uh, when it comes to plastics inside the vehicle. But this one is pretty good. I like the color they selected for the pad here. It gives it a nice accent. Uh, because before it was a little different, this one just kind of suits it very well. You have a compartment here, of course, full of, you know, papers and stuff. Uh, you have four AC vents here. And the AC, of course, is actually nice and powerful. That's something we've been enjoying. Because even with the hot sun here in La Union, the AC of this one is just fine. And even at the highest setting, it's actually, I would say it's making just as much noise as it, as it is cool air, which is perfectly fine uh, for this kind of weather. So let's tone that down. Uh, when we look at the steering wheel, this one now gets cruise control, which is something pretty fantastic uh, because it's get, getting, you have all the cruise control buttons on the right side of the steering wheel and uh, you have your set, cancel, reset, the usual stuff. However, the cruise control here is not the adaptive or the radar kind which is kind of unfortunate because you already have the system for the FEB, the sensors for it, but they didn't activate the cruise control or the adaptive cruise control for this one. Audio controls on the left, so on and so forth. Now let me take you through the main screen as well as the gauge cluster. So the instrument cluster of the Nissan Almera is actually very nice. 
and being that it's like part digital and part analog you can configure it in so many ways so right now in the digital screen we have the tachometer display as well as the nissan intelligent mobility display uh, basically the advanced safety features and also on the right you have your speedometer so all well and good there and then to adjust the brightness you use the knob there uh, makes it very very simple which i do actually like now when you go through the different settings uh, different you know areas of the of the screen you have your android auto the music display whatever you're playing uh, you have your this is actually for the start stop system when i press that so when i when i have the start stop uh, activated basically when you're idling it will uh, stop the engine and then restart it so kind of saving you fuel but of course it uh, the car will warm up because the the compressor won't be activated so keep that in mind here we have our TPMS uh, or our tire pressure monitoring system actually funny story when we drove this yesterday uh, the tire pressure was like way up at like 320 uh, kpa which is equivalent to around maybe 45 46 psi way too high that was because it was the shipping pressure so we brought it down to the correct temperature uh, pressure so right now it's still in the a, a bit low because well the car is kind of cold so it'll warm up later on uh, you have your VDC or the vehicle dynamic control so that's basically your stability control right here that's also the reason why there are no more buttons here on the left side because uh, most of it has been centralized into the screen and then um, driver assistance this is the one we wanted to show you because this will show you the different features you have in the vehicle when it comes to Nissan Intelligent Mobility so one of the things we really like about a lot of Nissans now is that they all share the same kind of audio system and this is the one that we really really like because it kind of has everything it's not it's not too big it doesn't have to be but it's very straightforward to use so you've got uh, these uh, different uh, screens basically just like your phone and just like your phone you can adjust the kind of you can customize it depending on what you want to do like for example you want widgets for like, your phone for your clock for your audio it all really depends on how you want to customize it it's like a grid pattern so let's see uh, select all delete all basically clears that up then you can move your clock to you know there in the middle and then add some widgets around it am if you listen to am usb so on and so forth uh, and then your android auto which by the way this one also already comes with android auto uh, and apple carplay because because it's uh, the previous one the pre facelift one did not come with android auto which you know is kind of sad for me so there once you set it the way you want go back and there it is basically or what you want to see and then you can adjust all the things you want to do because you have uh, the controls for the setting somewhere over oh yeah i'm sorry that's right i did clear it <laughs> but anyways the brightness you can access it there for day and night that's very useful for night uh, usually even on my navara it's the same kind of thing i set it to the maximum lowest setting there uh, the 360 camera here the avm is one of the nicer ones, one of the newer ones so basically you have the different views of your car all around your car and it comes with mod or moving object detection so if somebody's walking around your car if there's a dog walking around around like right here it'll it'll highlight whichever uh, area it's in so it's alerting you to the presence of something useful when you're backing out so as you can see now i have my android auto activated uh, right now we're not in metro manila we are actually in la union so yes we're in lu and we can now check out our different apps uh, basically that's what it does for you same if you use your and your apple carplay it gives you access to all your apps makes it very simple when you're on the go when you pop the hood of the nissan almera you'll notice that the engine bay well <laughs> busug na busug there's a lot of stuff going on there but powering this is the hra zero it's a one liter turbo gasoline engine the turbo is of course here in the back and if you follow the piping you'll see that in the front it does have an intercooler right about here down there so it's a turbo intercooler gasoline engine it makes 100 ps and in this version which has the cvt it makes 152 newton meters of uh, torque and that's actually what's interesting about the almera because the cvt gets a little bit uh, less torque than the manual which gets 160 newton meters but the engine is still the same but something to keep in mind here is that the engine is a three cylinder engine it's not a four cylinder that's why when you actually look at it closely while it's idling you'll see that it's kind of rocking back and forth 
here on the engine mount. So they actually have to engineer that because a three-cylinder engine is kind of naturally unbalanced, unlike a four-cylinder engine where, you know, they have an, an even number of cylinders canceling the vibration of each other out. So in this one, you see a little bit of reciprocation, not really a big deal. Only when you're idling in traffic do you actually feel it on the steering wheel and actually see it on the doors when the, when the car is running. Uh, when you also look around the engine bay, if you look at the battery, it's actually an idling start-stop battery. So because this version does come with idling start-stop, it saves you fuel while you're in traffic and also you know, doesn't let you feel the vibrations. Anyways, enough talk about this. Let's go take it out and see how this uh, vehicle performs on the roads around here. When it comes to changes or upgrades in the way the car actually feels to drive, uh, we're not expecting any differences really because fundamentally the vehicle is still the same, engine is the same, suspension seems to be the same. There are probably some minor improvements with maybe reliability or with better components so on and so forth. But uh, when you get down to it, the actual feel of the engine, the feel of the transmission, the feel when you're driving it around is exactly the same. And that's actually a good thing. Uh, now, with the pre-facelift Almeras, we've spent a considerable about, amount of time with it in the city, in traffic. And I can tell you that uh, when it comes to that kind of driving, it's really fantastic. Uh, the, basically, the transmission is smooth. It's a CVT, of course. And then the actual suspension is really good in the city. The tires are very quiet. Uh, it's really how it feels when you're, when you're driving it around. It's a great city car. It's a great everyday car. Now, there are going to be some uh, disadvantages when it comes to uh, the actual engine because the way it feels when you're, say, idling at a, tra at a traffic light, you know, when you're fully stopped and then the vehicle just idling, you can feel the vibration uh, from the engine uh, through the pedals on the steering wheel just a little bit, not a lot to be, like, uh, crazy or whatever to make it uncomfortable. It's actually okay. Uh, and then when uh, you have the, the auto start-stop uh, feature activated, It'll cut out the engine, you know, saving you from the vibrations if it's really bothering you. But also it saves you on the fuel, saves uh, on the CO2, which is kind of important now, especially when you look outside in, in Metro Manila and you look at, you know, all the smog present. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much uh, where we're at right now. What's really different with our time with Almerin now is that we're spending a bit more time uh, out of the city. We're on provincial highways, we're on expressways. That's really what's making the difference uh, with the vehicle. Because provincial highways, it's a different thing. Like for example, you get out of the asphalt onto the concrete right now. You can see that the Almera is actually suppressing the, the concrete pretty well. It's not too noisy inside, definitely not bumpy. Uh, the tire noise in TP Lex though, it's, uh, it's a little bit loud. Because you know, TP Lex is kind of hard to find a car that'll be quiet on that road for some reason. Uh, so yeah, that's not really a problem with the Almera, it's more of the road. Uh, what's great though is the power. Now in the city, uh, the one liter is not going to feel great because at low RPM, we're talking like from 1,000 up to around maybe 1,500, 2,000. There's not much there because again, still a one liter. But once you do activate the turbo, it's really fun. Let me show you. Uh, right now, we're doing let's say 70. Let's say I want to overtake that truck. I put my foot down in normal mode it does respond pretty well. But when you put it in sport mode, let me slow it back down to the same speed. So right now, and then put your foot down. The response, a lot better. That's what you want when you're overtaking. You want the extra top end, you want the extra power. But still, with a vehicle like this, remember you saw that 100 horsepower, 100 PS. So you wanna be planning your overtakes a, a little bit more. You don't have the power of bigger uh, 1.5 liter turbo engines at your disposal. So you have to really plan out your overtakes, especially if the vehicle is loaded. Where the Almera really excels is when it comes to fuel economy. Because if you're in the city, you can take advantage of uh, really the efficiency of the one liter uh, when you don't activate the turbo. If you're always driving, you know, like with the high RPMs, uh, we're talking about, let's say, maybe 30,000, 2,500 and above, the fuel economy is not really going to be great. But if you're keeping it at around 2,000, you're just cruising smoothly, you're being patient 
with your overtaking and with your acceleration, you're going to get some really good figures. Uh, during my time with it in the city, it was getting around 12 and a half kilometers per liter, which, you know, given today's fuel prices, is pretty good. I can probably do better depending on the traffic conditions and, of course, the ambient conditions. And when it comes to highway, that's where you're really going to enjoy it because on the drive up here on, uh, on all the expressways, we were doing an average of 21.1, which is like, whoa. And to think that time we were two in the car and with, you know, some camera gear. So there's some, some, some pretty significant weight and cargo. I mean, you know, weight with me anyway. But uh, there's some significant cargo in the vehicle. So it still speaks pretty well of the efficiency of the vehicle. Then there's also the convenience of the connected services. I mean, Nissan is not the first to offer that kind of feature here in the Philippines. I think that would be maybe Ford, maybe even Toyota, I'm not sure. But uh, the connected services where you to be able to control your car or certain features of the car that, that you may need to, you know, to take control of is actually good uh, from your phone or from an app. The issue with the Almera, however, is the competition. And by that, we're not talking about apples to apples competition, like you're comparing the Almera to a city or to a Vios or so on and so forth. It's the fact that there are so many more types of vehicles already available at this price range. Because for those like, who have bigger families, there are seven seaters available at this price range. And for those who want something a bit taller, a bit, has a bit more space, there are crossovers available at this price range even less. Of course, when it comes to the driving, the quality, uh, it's not going to feel the same because let me tell you, now this feels like a high quality vehicle, a high grade, a very well built vehicle and it's got, it really drives well. But are those qualities enough to sway buyers away from a crossover or a seven seater MPV like that one over there uh, into getting a sedan and said, well, let's go back to, well, not the warehouse. Let's go back to the hotel and talk about it. So yes, the Nissan Almera, it's a good car. It's a great car for the highway, a great car for the city, and a great car when you really need to park in tight spaces and use it for the usual everyday stuff. However, Nissan knows that a car like Almera won't sell in great, mar uh, in great numbers because the market, the world, has actually moved on. Everyone's looking at crossovers, pickup trucks, and other high-riding vehicles, particularly SUVs and crossover SUVs. So an Almera almost seems like a vehicle like that's really out of its time already. However, that's why Nissan is focusing on improving the customer experience, the ownership experience of something like the Almera. This VL comes with a lot of great stuff. Like I showed you, Nissan Connected Services, you get a lot of things you can control via the app. You can start it, you can locate it, you can set curfews and speed limits or speed warnings for your kids if you want to have them drive this. Uh, you also get an SOS that if you press well, you can't order any takeout or drive through but still it's a great function to have and you get it for three years with the Almera VL. Also, you get a five-year warranty in this one and coupled with all the things like the great drive, the great features and the, actual, the way it actually feels uh, when you're driving it every day, I think it's a good deal at 1.149 million. That's just 90,000 compared to the next lower grade model. And of course, you can uh, also forego a lot of these other features and other uh, extra stuff by going for something cheaper, the lower grade variants, including one that's uh, with the manual. That one we really want to try out, but Nissan really doesn't activate any manual units. So hopefully soon they will. But for now, we're liking what they did with the Almera VL. But let us know in the comments below what you think of this subcompact sedan from Nissan. Will it succeed in our market? Will it be eaten up by the, all the new crossovers coming into the market? Let us know. This is Vince of AutoIndustria.com. Thank you for watching.